Welcome. Welcome to Dancing Water. I'm Susan and I am delighted you're here for a dancing water practice today. Restorative yoga with minimal props. A very simple practice today. We're focusing on plumb, alignment, finding our sense of um, integrating in a vertical. We'll work with the spine, three simple postures that will allow us to feel what it feels like to be aligned in the spine. I love this word plum, and my husband, who's a carpenter, uses something called a plum bob, which is a heavy weight that's suspended by a string. And by the use of the weight and the flexibility of the string and gravity, he's able to evaluate whether something is in vertical or not. And we can do the same thing with the body. So let's just get set up with our props and then we'll get into our practice. Very simple today. Um, I'd like you to have a chair and um, I have, depending on the kind of chair you have, you might have something that has a hard um, seat. So I have a towel here so you can put a towel on there to give a little padding. The other prop I have here is a blanket that's rolled into a log. You can use, you can use a blanket, you could use uh, a couple of bath towels, you could if you had a bolster or a couple of pillows. I want something though that's pretty narrow because we're gonna lay back on it and I would like the, the prop to be between your shoulder blades so your shoulder blades can fall open. Uh, as always, uh, an eye covering of some sort, a t-shirt, a scarf. Um, I've got a, a small hand towel here and a cup of tea or some water as a way of nourishing yourself and marking the end of our practice. So let's begin in a seat. If you like, you could sit on your towel or your, your blanket log, or you could sit on with your hips a little bit higher than your knees if that feels more comfortable. You could also do this sitting in a chair. But I invite you to just feel yourself sitting and get yourself in such a way that you can feel your sit bones, the two bony processes at the base of your pelvis. So you might need to move the musculature of your hips away so that you can really feel your sit bones. And then just let yourself rock a little bit side to side. And feel the sensation of your spine coming in and out of alignment, right? You might imagine this idea of this plumb bob kind of playing in gravity. And then go forward and back a little bit. And just feel what that feels like. Feeling the, the bones at the base of your pelvis and just feel the sensation of your weight shifting. And then imagine that there is a plumb line that's being drawn up from the center of your spine up through the crown of your head. So dropping your chin so the back of your neck is long and find your plumb line. Just noticing the weight in your pelvis, noticing any place that you're holding tension, feeling your plumb line. Notice how your shoulders are falling. So depending on your body, it may feel easier to find plumb if your palms are up or supporting you on either side. Take a breath here and just feel the expansion, the soft lift and sink of your spine. So we'll play with some variations, allowing ourselves to feel what it feels like to move the spine in and out of alignment. So we'll begin with a flexion. I call this child's pose on a chair. I'll tell you, one of the things that happens for me 
if things feel stressful or busy. Right now, I'm diving into a lot of anti-racism work, a lot of reading and listening and learning, and sometimes it can be really rattling. And so sometimes I take this posture so that I can relax my nervous system and actually hear, receive the information and help myself choose from a place of skillfulness rather than reactivity or fear. So if for whatever reason you find yourself in stress, this is a great thing to do. So I like to just cross my legs, just in a simple tailor sit or um, and with one leg in front of the other. But uh, some people may prefer to have their legs out to the side. The key here is allowing yourself to just roll in, flexing the spine, really that spinal flexion, and taking your forehead and letting it rest on the edge of the chair, or in my case, the towel. And so that the skin at your third eye, right between your eyebrows, pulls down a little bit. This will open up the back of your neck and create some rounding. And I like to take my arms over my head. But again, it might feel better to you here. I was remembering when I was in this posture not long ago, remembering that when I was a kid in elementary school, that sometimes if we got all riled up, Sometimes our teacher would have us put our heads down on our desk. Do you remember that? Anybody else have that? And it occurs to me that it's basically a restorative pose. So take a couple of breaths and let yourself settle into whatever shape you've taken and check and see if there's any holding or tension anywhere. Check out your breathing and allow your breath to billow out the back of your ribs like the spinnaker on a sailboat, your back rounding out full of air. Softening your ears, relaxing the inside of your ears, and if your legs are crossed, just take a moment and switch the cross of your legs. As you do that, just noticing the sensation in your pelvis and your hips, the outside of your hips. Softening your hands and the soles of your feet. Every breath softens your shoulders down, creating more space between your shoulders and your ears. can consciously deepen your breath or you can let your breath flow exactly as it wants to. Perhaps sometimes deeper, sometimes more shallow.
And then as you're ready, gently take your hands to your thighs or to the floor next to you and just gently push yourself up. And again, find your plumb line. Maybe rock a little bit side to side, very smoothly like seagrass, front and back. And then find the plumb, find the plumb line. Good. So from flexion of the spine, let's take our bodies into extension. We'll take what I call tree pose on a log. So here you have your rolled blanket or bolster or towels. Take it right up to your sacrum, right at the base of your spine. And extend your legs long. And let your spine line up along the blanket or towels, along the log. So your head should be supported and on the blanket so that your neck isn't arching back but your spine is open. Can you feel how your shoulders fall on either side of the prop? And you can take the arms out to a T or out to soft cactus. And here, take your one of your legs and just Bend it and let it fall out to the side. Now, it's possible that this feels like too much stretch on the inside of your, of your thigh. If that's the case, you can take the, the towel that was on the chair and just place it underneath the bent leg. So even though I, my body is such that I can have that stretch, for restorative practice, it works better for me to have support. It allows a softening that is not possible if my leg is resting on the floor. And now take your hands up overhead and lift your shoulders up away from the floor, and then exhale, soften them down over the prop. Let's just do that two more times. Inhaling up, and exhaling down. One more time. Lifting your shoulders up, and then exhaling them down. And now just pausing here and in your mind's eye, seeing the shape of your spine. This extension, there's a slight movement of your head and tail toward each other at the back. Now, just feeling your ribs floating on the front, your front ribs opening and closing with your breath. Take a big conscious breath in and let it go. And then very gently straighten out your bent leg and now feel your body long. And as you're ready, bend the other leg up. With or without the support, so the sole of your foot is in contact with your inner thigh. And your long leg, your toes are curling out or rolling away from center. So your little toe is closest to the floor.
And let's take a couple of breaths again, inhaling up and melting your shoulders down, opening your collarbones. Two more times. Last time, last breath. Now checking into your ankles and your wrists, making sure that there's no tension held there, feeling your neck, the back of your neck, or maybe a little bit of a curve, depending on your body. Mm. See if you can let go of the weight of your pelvis and your shoulders and your head. Without changing them, just noticing the shape that your fingers have taken. Check into your jaw, relaxing at the hinge right below your earlobes. Couple more breaths here. Deep breath in, expanding, extending your top ribs. And then as you're ready, extending both legs long, both hands overhead, reach and stretch. Oh, and then very gently roll yourself over to one side. Use your top hand and put yourself up. Again, find yourself in a seat and find your plumb line. Feeling the sensation of your spine now as opposed to when we began. You've had some flexion and some extension and just notice what the sensation is. Now, you can just move your blanket log off to the side and replace your towel or pillow onto the chair. This is one of my favorite postures and one that I love to use when I'm working in my office and I feel myself getting revved up and needing a restorative pause. This is something that you can do for a minute or 20 minutes and I recommend it highly. For the purposes of our practice today, I'm inviting you to have no support underneath your body so that you can feel the sensation of your spine. When we get there, you may find that you want some support for your head. You may want something more under your knees. That's totally fine. But for the moment, let's experiment with just feeling what it feels like to put our knees onto the chair. So hips come right to the edge of the base of the chair. 
rolling back, and then placing the knees at 90 degrees on the chair. Rolling back gently, and let your feet soften. For me, my feet are touching the back of the chair. And again, depending on your body, you may need more lift for your knees in order to get the 90 degrees at your hips and your knees. Also, it might feel better to have your knees, your feet a little higher. And if that's the case, you're welcome to put a pillow there. Letting your hands come out at about 45 degrees, resting on the floor. And feel your feet and lower legs heavy. Your femur bones dropping on that plumb line, that long vertical line into your hip sockets. And then notice the spine. So for me, in this position, I have really no curve at my low back. But this orientation of my legs creates a lengthening through my spine. Now you may find that when you have no props, that your chin begins to drift up and creating this, this uh, flexion through your, or this extension through your neck. And if that's the case, you may want a little bit of support under your head. But it depends on your body. And what I want you to feel is just to notice how your spine is oriented on the floor. If it helps your body and mind relax, you can take an eye covering, a light cloth or something to block out the light and give your eyes a little bit of weight. But honestly, when I'm working in my office and I need a little restorative snack, I usually don't use one. I usually just take myself right onto the floor and find the support of the chair for my legs. Oh. Let's do an audible sound for a couple of breaths. You can hum, you can do horse lips, you can just make an audible sound. So three breaths with sound. Inhale and exhale. <sighs> Inhale, creating some kind of vibration. Some kind of sound. Notice sensation in your inner thighs. If there's any holding or gripping, make any adjustments that you need in order to relax the bones and muscles through your legs and hips. This simple inversion creates a different flow, not just of bodily fluids, but of energy. Mm. And invites the deep letting go. As we allow the parasympathetic nervous system to come online 
which correspondingly allows the prefrontal cortex, which is the thinking, reasoning, language-based part of our brain. This is one of the reasons that restorative practice is one of the important essential components, especially when we are in stressful or challenging situations. Allowing ourselves to come out of the fight or flight of the sympathetic nervous system and softening into the rest and digest. So literally, when I am digesting challenging information, challenging beliefs about myself and the world, restorative practice invites us to be able to digest it. So just letting yourself take a few breaths of silence, quieting both the internal and the external landscape. You can stay in this as long as you like. I'm going to take us out to end this practice, but you're welcome to either pause the recording or just let it play through and stay as long as it feels good. When you are ready to come out, take your feet a little closer to your chest or to the edge of the chair so your knees come close to your chest. Just give a little squeeze. So your tailbone here is coming up off the floor, rounding the spine, and then roll to one side. Push down. And come back to seated. One more time, feeling, finding your plumb line. That sea grass of the spine, the plumb bob of your pelvis connected to the string on your spine. And if you have tea or water, just taking a moment to honor yourself, honor your choice to practice, honor that this practice is what allows us to skillfully navigate stressful and challenging times. So taking a moment, smelling mm, the fragrance of this moment and taking a sip. Watering our intention to move through the world and from a place of skillful calm and relaxation. I am so grateful that you came to Dancing Water today for a practice of restorative yoga. As always, 
I offer two restorative practices every week. Wednesdays is minimal props and Sundays is nesting props. So please come back again. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can do that just below. And if you click the bell, you'll get notifications every time I, I post a new practice. You can also find a library of recorded practices that are organized by practice type. So if you prefer minimal pop props or nesting props, you can find that. There are also mindful movement practices of a variety of kinds. You can also find me at my blog at focuspocusnow.com and at my website at susanmcculley.com. I hope you'll reach out and let me know how I can be of service and how I can help you. It matters that we practice together even while we're apart. Thank you for being here. Until next time. Mm.